So let me start this video off by asking you guys a question. If you're a fan of one of the teams that was rumored to be going after Kevin Durant this past offseason after he requested a trade, or if you're just evaluating these teams that ultimately did not make the trade for Kevin Durant, do you think any of them regret that decision right now? Because we're going to go through the teams here in a little bit. Think about, you know, the rumors that are out there, what they could have given up, what they were or weren't willing to give up. Do you think they regret that choice? Because this is a very uncommon situation in the modern NBA. Typically, if a player requests a trade, they get moved or they they sit out the season. They don't just return to their team and play and play certainly quite as well as Kevin Durant has this season and the way that the Nets have kind of turned their season around has kind of flipped this situation completely around for Brooklyn. But this isn't even really a Brooklyn conversation. It's about these other teams, these teams that had these maybe younger assets or draft picks that had the opportunity to just bring in Kevin Durant, add to what they had, give up these younger guys, and pretty much all of them chose not to. Like the reason Kevin Durant didn't get traded wasn't because Brooklyn was unwilling to, just for the most part, their asking price was above what other teams were willing to give up. And it, it made sense at the time why you wouldn't be willing to give up a ton for Kevin Durant. He's 34 years old. He tore his Achilles a couple of years ago. He missed uh, you know, a good amount of games last year, continually getting older. The, the value they were looking to get in return for Kevin Durant was pretty crazy because of we were coming you know, right after the, the Rudy Gobert trade, and it really screwed up the value of what Brooklyn was expecting in return for Kevin Durant. And not only that, but for a guy that chose to go to Brooklyn in the first place and then asked out via a trade last offseason, you have no idea what the long-term commitment is going to be like from him. Even if he is good, you don't know if he's going to want to stick around or just request a trade another year later, especially for these smaller market teams. So let's get to the teams here. These teams that maybe regret passing on Kevin Durant. First things first to me, the Toronto Raptors are really interesting teams to take a look at here. Now, granted, Toronto's biggest issue has been health. They've been missing a ton of guys. A ton of guys have been missing games, but the, the name that they would not include in a Kevin Durant trade was Scotty Barnes. And I'm not saying they made the incorrect decision because I love Scotty Barnes, but there hasn't really been the leap that I think a lot of us had hoped to see from Scotty Barnes this year. He hasn't been bad, but when you're talking about a guy that you are leaving out of Kevin Durant trade talks, yes, he's, you know, 20, 21 years old. He's a guy you just drafted on a rookie contract. Kevin Durant's expensive and he's old. You don't know if your team is quite ready to compete. So trading away Scotty Barnes and going all in on Kevin Durant, someone you don't even know if wants to be in Toronto. I understand the questions uh, that come with that move. And I think ultimately it's the right decision to hang on to Scotty Barnes because you didn't know what Kevin Durant Durant was going to look like this season. He's been unbelievable, by the way. But it is just an interesting thing to think about with Scotty Barnes not quite taping, taking the leap that you would have wanted him to. And then at that point, if it wasn't Barnes, then it was going to be like Siakam and some stuff or something that Brooklyn just wouldn't have been interested in. They wanted Scotty Barnes. Toronto wasn't willing to do it. And now looking back on those rumors, it's certainly interesting given how their respective seasons have gone. Another interesting team here is Phoenix. Now there's two different ways to look at this for Phoenix in terms of what they could have done to get Kevin Durant. So at the time, there were rumors that they weren't even willing to give up all their draft picks much less DeAndre Ayton and some other stuff. The draft pick situation was something they were not willing to just say, here, have all of them. So that was the first issue. The other issue was they didn't know what was happening with DeAndre Ayton. It would have had to be a sign and trade. And then there just would have been a lot of weird complications. Ben Simmons complicates this as well, which we're going to talk about later with some of these other teams. But ultimately, if Phoenix really wanted to, they could have figured out a sign and trade for Ayton, sent him somewhere, maybe sent some of the wings, gotten Kevin Durant. Point being, there was a structure there, I think, at the time that could have worked that allowed them to keep, obviously, Devin Booker and Chris Paul and add Kevin Durant to the roster and, it, and keep at least one of the wings, one of the wings that really helps them. And when you look at how Phoenix's season has gone, where they've been a little bit up and down, they haven't been very good lately. Ayton has been fine. You know, other guys have been hurt, but they don't necessarily look like one of these top, top tier contenders. When you pass up on an opportunity to bring in someone like Kevin Durant, when Kevin Durant wants to go to your team, like that was reportedly his top choice was to go to Phoenix and play alongside Chris Paul and play alongside Devin Booker. And you don't capitalize on that. That can turn out to be a massive, massive mistake. Now, obviously, there was a lot of stuff going on with Phoenix at the time with the organization and the owner and all this different kinds of stuff. But ultimately, I think there's a team in the league right now that regrets the most not making the Kevin Durant trade. I think it's Phoenix because regardless of what the rest of the roster looks like, Durant, Booker, and Chris Paul with some other pieces there, maybe you keep one of the wings, you bring in a big, whatever the case may be. Like that is, in my opinion, a more competitive championship team than what they have right now. We've seen what this Phoenix team looks like for the last couple of seasons. And I would have been willing to, to make some adjustments to move eight and to move some other stuff. And as well, as this rumor suggests, give up all the draft picks, which is not something Phoenix was willing to do. Probably another team that maybe regrets that. Now I talked about the Ben Simmons thing, and that's really important for this next team. And that is the Miami Heat. Reportedly, those were the two teams. It was Phoenix and Miami. That's where Kevin Durant wanted to go. And the problem with that was if Brooklyn wanted anything for Miami, the conversation would begin with Bam Adebayo, but they couldn't get Bam if they still had Ben Simmons on their roster because of a weird rule in terms of rookie extensions where him, where Bam and Ben Simmons both have uh, the same kind of rookie extension. You can only have one of those 
those on the same team. Same thing with, I believe, Brandon Ingram and a handful of other guys. And so that complicated the situation entirely, much less the fact that like Kevin Durant ideally is going to Miami to play alongside Bam Adebayo and alongside Jimmy Butler. And the team that they've created there allows really well for someone like Kevin Durant to slide in there, but then you have to give up the assets and the teams. It doesn't make sense. I don't think Brooklyn was entirely interested in Tyler Hero as the centerpiece of a Kevin Durant trade package. And it just would have gotten very complicated. And again, if you were Miami and you were motivated enough, similar to the stuff that's happening with, or that had happened with Phoenix, if you were motivated enough, you could have, you know, found somewhere for you know, Bam to go or Ben Simmons to go elsewhere. You could have tried to figure out a structure there. But again, ultimately teams just decided that it wasn't worth it because of the age and a variety of other factors. Another team in Miami that I think certainly is regretting, maybe not pushing for that a little bit more. When you have someone just like Phoenix, Kevin Durant wants to go to your team. It didn't seem like they really pushed hard enough to make that happen. Next up is another really interesting one, and it's New Orleans, because New Orleans is good. Like, they are arguably the most talented team in the league, and they haven't even really had all their guys together and playing in all these games, and they still have, you know, one of, if not the best records in the Western Conference, depending on when you're watching this. And the rumors at the time were like, okay, Brandon Ingram and a pick, or Brandon Ingram straight up for Kevin Durant. Now, I believe Ingram also qualified in that, you know, rookie extension thing where you've had a, would have had to find a, a situation for Ben Simmons to go to. You couldn't have both those guys on the same roster, but it would have been a really incredible trade, I think, for both teams because Ingram is awesome and fits kind of the youth movement that Brooklyn would want to go towards if they were to trade away Kevin Durant. And as good as Ingram is, like Durant has been an MVP caliber guy this year, which isn't where Ingram has been. He's been very good, but not on an MVP level. And that would have added a dynamic to this group that I think really would have pushed them over the top. Now, I don't think they regret it at all, by the way, because New Orleans is looking at a situation where they can compete this year and they can compete for the next eight years if everybody's healthy in Ingram. And of course, Zion are huge parts of that. And they have their veteran perimeter score type guy in TJ McCollum and obviously Kevin Durant would have improved their roster this year but I don't think it would have been worth the long-term outlook of what this group looks like with all these future assets along with Ingram Zion and the other pieces they have there so that's one that was pretty heavily rumored and I think Brooklyn was probably most interested in but again New Orleans just did not want to give up Brandon Ingram and I think that makes total sense now looking back on it here's another one that I think a, a lot of people maybe forgot about remember the Jalen Brown stuff with Boston uh there was a rumor basically that they had actively discussed a, a trade or at least thrown out a name um in exchange for Kevin Rand, that name was Jalen Brown, which is an interesting situation because two years from now, he's an unrestricted free agent and it makes no sense for him to sign an extension before then because he's going to be able to get the most money, uh, you know, signing two years from now. And it created, you know, maybe a bit of a weird situation there with Boston in terms of maybe Jalen Brown didn't feel wanted. Of course, then they went through the coaching turmoil and they've been awesome to begin this year. And Jalen Brown has been like a second team all NBA caliber guy to begin this season. But it's just interesting to think back again on that situation, what Jalen Brown could have looked like in Brooklyn, what Kevin Rant could have looked like alongside Jason Tatum. Again, another team that made the correct decision, but it's just interesting to recap some of these rumors. And then next up, Atlanta. So this is a really strange one to look at because at the time, the rumor was DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, and like some sort of draft compensation in exchange for Kevin Durant, which is probably the most low-balled offer of any of the like rumored stuff. Like no, there's no centerpiece there. There's no big time player that you're really excited to get back if you're Brooklyn. And then when you look at what Atlanta ended up giving up in exchange for DeJounte Murray and the assets they gave up in that deal. It's interesting how locked in they were on bringing in someone like Murray as opposed to being a little bit more aggressive and bringing in Kevin Durant again, who's been an MVP caliber player this season. I understand the youth of Murray and Trey Young, how that goes together, uh, the defensive capabilities that DeJounte Murray brings and kind of the mindset they had. I get that. And you're not giving up like actual key pieces to the roster in order to bring in uh, Murray. It's mostly just draft picks rather than, uh, you know, what you'd have to give up for Kevin Durant. But if you, let's just say if you erase the Murray trade and they do like, you know, Hunter Collins and every first round pick they can give up to Brooklyn in exchange for Kevin Durant. What does this roster look like right now? Is it a better roster? Absolutely. They're certainly better contenders. I don't know if the Trey Young, Kevin Durant thing would really work out. I don't think personality wise, those guys really would fit too well together, but it's an interesting rumor to look back on again, because it, it's weird in hindsight that Atlanta wasn't more aggressive. And then last up quickly is Memphis. Memphis is always involved in these, you know, potential star trades because they have, uh, you know, so many great assets of the team at the time. They didn't want to include Desmond Bain. They didn't want to include Jaron Jackson Jr. And those guys, although they've missed a ton of games, this year are both awesome young players. And I don't think Memphis at all regrets not bringing in Kevin Durant. And so when you look at this group, it's interesting because when I started the concept of this video, I was like, I bet there's a lot of teams that regret trading or not trading, excuse me, not being more aggressive for Kevin Durant. And really there's only like two teams. Like it's Phoenix and Miami for the most part, maybe Atlanta, but those two teams were at the top of the list for Kevin Durant, how good he's been and, and how uneven those two teams have been at times this season has definitely, I think, overshadowed the, this situation a little bit. And since Jacques Vaughn has taken over, like Brooklyn is almost back to where they were when they had Harden and Durant and Kyrie together in terms of, you know, offensive defensive numbers and record and all those different things. And this is such a unique situation. I can't recall a time that a player requested
requested a trade in the in the more modern era of the league that a player requested a trade then came back and was awesome and you know a handful of months after they requested the trade everything is presumably fine and he's going to continue to you know stay there and play out this contract and be incredible an MVP caliber player the closest parallel would be Kobe when he requested a trade from the Lakers came back obviously continued to be great for them for years and years and years and uh that one at the time seemed like it was uh, pretty close to actually happening but I can't really recall any other time and certainly in this new era of player movement where you know everybody wants to change teams all the time Kevin Durant requesting a trade those teams not being aggressive enough to go and get him or Brooklyn just being unwilling to trade him and then now they're awesome again is one of the weirder storylines of the season and I think something that we're going to look back on as I try to in this video and think about how the league could have been different what could have changed if some of those teams were a little bit more aggressive and if Kevin Durant did end up getting moved.